a good morning everyone welcome to saji samach my name is naima uruj and i am part of tech mahindra foundation and my name is anjali d from tech mahindra foundation we are delighted to welcome you all to the 11th edition of tech mahindra foundation's saji samaj we are honored to collaborate with naidisha for this edition naidisha is a pioneer organization in the field of disability that works with families having individuals with intellectual disabilities keeping in tune with this year's international day of persons with disability theme of united in action to rescue and achieve the sdg for with and by persons with disabilities we present to you today's conference on empowering caregivers of persons with disabilities before we set off with the invigorating discussions ahead of us i would like to share a few long things kau de tu me please it takai na ka ground rules for uh, this online event your microphone is disabled if you wish to contribute to the ongoing discussion or ask questions please share your questions to mr pravin and ms aditi so their name you can see in bracket q and a so the video of all attendees is disabled to maintain sufficient network bandwidth and minimize distractions for better viewing experience you can make necessary changes through pinning appropriate screens as per your wish we also have sign language interpreters for various segments of today's session who would be supporting us and i'm pleased to introduce them here we have with us mr sundar raju from deaf enabled foundation hyderabad and ms shravanthi from deaf enabled foundation hyderabad thank you to both of you for your support today i would now like to invite ms neha suneji director of child development at tech mahindra foundation to introduce our work at tech mahindra foundation over to you neha thank you so much naima a very good morning everyone we are so delighted to invite you to the 11th edition of saji samaj founded in the year 2006 tech mahindra foundation is the corporate social responsibility arm of tech mahindra limited we work extensively on the vision of empowerment to education with three key focus areas education employability and disability we are trying to bring social change in touch lives through our 150 plus projects with the help of 90 plus partner organizations in 11 locations across india the foundation under its endeavor smart which stands for skills for market training program is making the youth self reliant by training them with in demand skills the smart is implemented by establishing a network of centers and academies both directly and through other partner implementing agencies currently the foundation runs nine academies directly and 90 plus centers through implementing agencies the foundation has extended support to various government schools to bridge the gap from streets to schools by facilitating the students with skill teachers and improved infrastructure the arise or all round improvement in school education is our education program that focuses on enabling children from underprivileged and margin marginalized socio economic strata to receive quality primary education currently the foundation works with close to 18 arise schools pan india reaching out to close to 5000 children shikshantar the foundation's teacher development program is the flagship program that is aiming at creating a difference in education by empowering the teachers and helping them make safer and happier classrooms the foundation runs these in form of in service teacher education institutes at the shard garden and shakti nagar in delhi the itr has highly qualified teacher education well structured workshops seminar halls fully equipped ics ict labs and resource centers to offer workshops to teachers for their professional development in addition one of our partner implemented programs science academy in collaboration with sahayata trust in hyderabad has trained a total of 1000 science teachers till date and finally our third vertical the disability vertical the foundation believes that there is ability in disability with the focus on creating an inclusive world and providing a life of dignity and confidence we are continuously working in the area of education and skill development for children and youth with disabilities currently the foundation has 40 plus projects with various implementing agencies and so glad to see some of them with us today here for the discussion in the disability space to ensure our beneficiary have access to government schemes last year we joined hands with naidisha 
to create awareness on UDIB schemes. And this year, we have take, taken our partnership with Naidisha to the next level. And we are so glad that with committed organizations like Naidisha, we are able to contribute to the community of persons with disabilities. Naidisha's commitment to caregivers and to the community is truly commendable. We are thrilled about this partnership and I cannot wait for the event to unfold further today. Hoping you'll find the event useful and help us spread our wings towards the PWD community. Thank you once again, a very, very warm welcome. Over to you, Naima and Angie. Thank you, Neha. Uh, I would also now like to call uh, Dr. Aditi Kumar to introduce Nai Disha and the work at their organization. Over to you, Aditi. Thanks, Naima. A great welcome to all the panelists and everybody attending Saju Samaj 11. Naidisha, a tech-enabled organization working in the realm of disability, functions as a dedicated lifelong partner for families with children impacted by conditions like autism, Down syndrome, and other intellectual developmental disabilities. We help the child reach his or her true potential by providing families with information, guidance, and hope through a reliable and evolving digital hub and a supportive online peer community. We host a digital platform with trustworthy and verified information and resources, expert networks, a helpline available over the phone as well as on WhatsApp, and a supportive peer community that meets not only in person, but also online and also actively assists each other through WhatsApp. Thanks for the opportunity Tech Mahindra Foundation to pass. Uh, over to you, Naima Nanji. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you so much. Okay. So to start the event, uh, Saji Sabaj, or Shared Understanding, if you translate it to English, it's Tech Mahindra Foundation's attempt towards creating a broader platform to enable advocacy through discourse and discussions on issues related and relevant to development sectors in India. Through previous editions of Saji Samaj, we have had stimulating discussions on issues like women in STEM, uh, cyber safety in uh, ch child safety in cyberspace, sorry, social emotional learning in education and inclusion of persons with disabilities at workplace. This edition of Saji Samaj is 11th in the series and it aims to initiate a discussion on empowering caregivers of persons with disabilities and the crucial role that they play in ensuring that persons with disabilities live a life of dignity and independence. Tech Mahindra Foundation has always valued and recognized the role of parents or caregivers in the development and advancement of children with disabilities. With the assistance of committed organizations like Naidisha, we are hopeful of bringing the challenges of caregivers to the forefront and devising solutions to empower them in their arduous journey of being there for their loved ones. Today is special for us at Tech Mahindra Foundation because today, along with Naidisha, we would be releasing a compendium on schemes and policies for persons with disabilities in the state of Telangana. The compendium, uh, the compendium is expected to be a one-stop resource booklet for persons with disabilities and their parents and caregivers with verified information on national and state government schemes, information on service providers like counselors, therapists, and relevant phone numbers for easy access. Following the release of the compendium, we have a keynote address and a panel discussion where a diverse group of speakers from organizations that are working with persons with disabilities, caregivers, parents, and government officials who will attempt to address the importance of equipping the caregivers with the right tools and highlight the role they play in helping build an inclusive society. To start the proceedings at Saji Samaj today, I am privileged to invite to this forum our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Chetan Kapoor, for his words of wisdom and the launch of the compendium. Welcome, Chetan. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Naima. Of course, overwhelmed uh, at this uh, very important occasion and uh, also um, filled with a huge sense of gratitude uh, towards so many people. Uh, I have to start with uh, the fact that um, the founders of Tech Mahindra Foundation back in 2005-2006, when they conceptualized the idea of the foundation, 
they were prescient enough to understand the importance of working for persons with disabilities and enshrined in Tech Mahindra Foundation's charter that at any given point in time, at least 10% of all our beneficiaries must be persons with disabilities. I don't think too many organizations have taken this step right from day one. This has helped us stay the course and ensure that in each of our program designs, we make sure that there is ample representation of persons with disabilities. I am happy to share that we've gone beyond this 10% mark. And if I were to look at the overall allocation of resources, nearly 20% of Tech Mahindra Foundation's funding is now devoted to projects that are meant for persons with disabilities. Therefore, TMF over the years has been taking some very significant steps in ensuring that we work significantly with persons with disabilities. We started off with supporting a uh, a number of organizations which are working for the education of children, as well as employability of youth with disabilities. And now we are moving to a point where we are trying to add significant value to the work of many of these organizations who work with a great deal of passion, who work with a great deal of dedication. And we're trying to see where we as a corporate foundation can really add value to their work. In this direction, I am pleased to share with you that we are we have now decided to move to a life stage approach of working for persons with disabilities, because when we looked at it, uh, this is one segment which um, merits that we work with a life stage approach rather than a in a piecemeal manner. And as we go along, we've already introduced some projects which are to do with early identification of disabilities. And in the uh, times to come, we are going to strengthen our work in the zero to six age group, as well as the 18 plus age group, because we realize that when it comes to helping persons with disabilities with means of livelihoods, we have to look beyond just employability options. We are looking at career counseling. We are looking at entrepreneurship. We are looking at various ways by which persons with disabilities across the spectrum can be led to a more independent and dignified life. So that's been our approach. And the other realization that has very clearly come is the importance of collaboration while working for persons with disabilities. I've always maintained that in the social development sector, before you try and scale wide, you have to first scale deep. And when it comes to working for persons with disabilities, the depth is immense. Because the kind of nuances which are there, when you work with them, you realize the 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 importance of working at depth. I think we we've, we've just started to scrape the surface, and there is a lot more depth to be covered. And in that direction, I'm glad that we've taken this course of collaborating with like-minded organizations such as Naidisha in this direction. I think there is a need for collective awareness sensitization, building empathy, and of course, decisive, impactful action. And the compendium that we are going to release today is a clear step in that direction. I am grateful to Prachi and the entire team of Naidisha who have collaborated with us for this very, very significant step that we are taking. What we plan to do is starting with Telangana, we hope to have such a compendium for all states of the country in due course and hopefully bring it out as a national digital repository. So join me in this journey, friends, because it's something which is extremely significant in paving the way for a better life for persons with disabilities, which I am told is almost about 15% of our population. It's not a small number. It's a huge number. And I think only with strong collective collaborative action can we as civil society, as the social sector, uh, hope to do some justice to this idea of bringing equity and inclusivity for persons with the life of for, for persons with disabilities. Thank you very much. And I look forward to this very engaging and fruitful discussion today as we go along. Thank you so much.
Shetan, we can move ahead with the launch and you can, if you can please formally invite uh, Mr. Jayesh to launch the company. Okay, great. Uh, yes, it is my absolute privilege and delight to have with us a figure who has really shaped the course of development in the state of Telangana. I'm delighted to have with us Mr. Jayesh Ranjan, IAS, and would invite him along with Prachi of Naidisha to unveil the compendium that we are going to release today. Can we have the compendium, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uh, delighted to join Prachi and formally launch this compendium. Okay. Uh, before we move forward, Prachi, would you like to just say a few words about the compendium before we um, request Mr. Ranjan for his keynote? Sure, maybe I'll ask my team members, Neha, uh, Priya and uh, Aditi to share some words, what went into the compendium, because they worked hard to build this along with the team at PMS. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shanmukha Priya from Team Naidisha. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Tech Mahindra Foundation for their collaboration, which is really crucial a step towards breaking barriers. A special thank you to J.H. Ranjan, sir, for accepting our invitation and joining us today. Uh, today is a very extremely important uh, day for us. This compendium is a beacon of empowerment designed to guide and inform caregivers and persons with disabilities with valuable details about services and benefits, such as the process of availing Sadaram certificate or various educational benefits and scholarships available, healthcare support systems such as Niramaya or Adip social security schemes like loan facilities, income tax rebates, skill development, and any employment opportunities, legal entitlements such as voting rights, uh, availing legal guardianship, and provisions such as travel concessions, and everything for persons with disabilities in Telangana. This is uh, more than a guide. It's a tool for fostering independence and uh, ensuring everyone in the community is very well informed and empowered. Did Together, we are shaping the future where fears and dreams know no bounds. And Rohit Vamshi and I think there's a network issue, Priya. And that this compendium. Please continue. Scheme. This compendium will be accessible in Telugu for the next couple of months, ensuring that it will be every part of Telangana. We extend a formal question to Mr. Jayesh Ranjan for a keynote address. Thank you. So, um, my pleasure to invite Mr. Jayesh Ranjan to deliver the keynote address. Um, uh, Mr. Ranjan holds an impressive educational background, including degrees in psychology, business management, and public management. He stands out as the All India topper of his IAS batch in 1992. Mr. Ranjan has undertaken various international assignments, earned prestigious scholarships, and received accolades such as the Royal Order of the Polar Star from the King of Sweden in 2019. Currently serving as the Principal Secretary of the Industries and Commerce and Information Technology Departments in Telangana, he is deeply involved in shaping policies, attracting investments, and promoting digital empowerment. Beyond his official roles, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan actively supports numerous social, cultural, cultural and charitable causes, contributing to various boards and advisory committees. Mr. Jayesh Ranjan, it's my delight to have you with us today, and I would want to invite you to deliver the keynote address for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chetanji. Uh, <clears throat> greetings to all the panelists, all the invitees, members of uh, Tech Mahindra Foundation, members of Nai Disha. First of all, my apologies. I have not yet been able to reach my office. I'm still in the car, but I have... Uh, parked my car on the side. So so I guess it will be stable while I speak. 
but nevertheless i'm very happy that i'm uh, invited to be a part of this very important initiative in fact uh, <clears throat> just as many of you have very strong associations with tech mahindra particularly tech mahindra foundation even i have a good association with them in my personal capacity as uh, chetan ji pointed out i support lots of uh, social and charitable causes and uh, one activity of which i was a part of in some ways i was the kind of instigator of that initiative of course unfortunately it is not happening since the last few years but it happened for many years in hyderabad which is called abilities mela we used to organize uh, job mailers for uh, persons with disabilities given the fact that there are so many tech companies other uh, service sector companies who can potentially take uh, and gainfully employ persons with disability so we used to do this in partnership with various organizations and one of the core member of our group of organizations used to be the tech mahindra foundation so i'm aware about their engagement their interest in the disability sector and therefore i'm not at all surprised that they are joining hands with uh, with uh, naidesha not just to bring out this compendium but also hopefully to disseminate it to see how it is uh, implemented to help people benefit from all the schemes etc which has been uh, which have been identified so my congratulations to both the parties the tech mahindra foundation and uh, naidesha as well i have just a couple of points to make because i know that uh, the real domain experts who work with uh, persons with disabilities particularly with children of uh, children with uh, intellectual disabilities they are all part of the panel so i would rather uh, listen to them and understand their thoughts but a couple of points which i would like to make is so as i said i have been working with persons with disabilities since more than a decade as a part of this abilities mela and uh, <clears throat> what i found was that amongst different categories of disabilities the one which uh, challenges all of us the most where uh, we find that interventions are uh, are uh, are kind of limited and uh, the ability to get outcomes desirable outcomes or positive outcomes of those interventions are limited are uh, persons with intellectual disabilities in the abilities mela also we found that the persons with uh, mobility or uh, locomotor problems orthopedically handicapped as we call them or persons with hearing impairment and uh, even uh, persons with uh, sight uh, problems uh, visual disabilities etc we were able to still find them employment but for uh, persons with intellectual di disabilities there was very very little scope unless you were on a borderline as you know intellectual disabilities also has a range from borderline to mild to moderate to severe etc only the borderline cases could be i mean in my experience of about 6 7 years of running this abilities mela i have recollection of hardly some four five of such people getting some gainful employment so which of course i it's not intuitively very difficult to understand because if your uh, intellect development is of a completely different kind where uh, there is no way in which you can focus on anything anything concrete then finding a regular employment will be difficult so it is very obvious that in that case working with caregivers becomes the next best alternative and uh, how do you ensure that caregivers receive first of all uh, lots of moral support lots of uh, emotional support there is a community of caregivers there are professionals who devote time to caregivers and obviously even if you have severe kind of uh, <clears throat> intellectual disability through appropriate interventions the impact of it can be reduced we have i have seen personally many cases including a few in my own family in which uh, uh, through some kind of training behavioral uh, guidance etc little bit of depend independence can be can be created in that person who is suffering from this uh, difficulty but how do you ensure that caregivers uh, feel uh, empowered to do so and they have the right kind of tools to do so is again a kind of a challenge that i have seen one solution which i have been uh, noticing of late is the more the prevalent use of technology in fact as i said i was involved in abilities mela for some years thereafter uh, the organization was not very very kind of uh, uh, it was not it was not uh, uh, 
happening thereafter. But something else has started happening with which also I've been in, involved. And again, I can take the credit that it happened uh, within my charge. Officially, one of the responsibilities that I was holding. Some of you may know that in uh, Hyderabad, lots of innovation is happening. Lots of innovation institutions have been created like the T-Hub and T-Works, etc. So one of the innovation institution is called the TSIC, the Telangana State Innovation Cell. And uh, <clears throat> under the auspices of uh, TSIC, we have started conducting an annual event. We conduct actually that event in uh, December. So hopefully uh, we may do it uh, one of these days uh, in this month or possibly in January, which is called uh, a exhibition on assistive technologies. See, as you know, there are uh, amazing innovation happening to improve the quality of living of persons suffering with different kinds of uh, disabilities. And uh, in the last three years, when we have organized this exhibition, I've come across many, many solutions which have potentially something to do with uh, improving the quality of life of a person with intellectual uh, disability as well. And uh, these are things which give us hope. There are also possibilities that if uh, something is not addressing some very pressing challenge of an intellectually disabled person, it is not that uh, <clears throat> no one has, uh, I mean, people have failed to develop something. The correct thing to say would be, the correct thing to conclude would be that no one has tried to get into that area. And that is again something which we can very easily organize. We can organize hackathons, we can organize grand challenges. And we have the ability today to get the best minds, the best innovators, the best entrepreneurs, not just from Hyderabad or Telangana, but from the country, from the world, actually, to participate in it. So I would like this stream also to be focused. While it is very important to understand the schemes, the, the kind of uh, entitlements, the benefits that the family, the caregiver should get. But how do you bring those technologies also? And first of all, how do you get access to those technologies because lots of these technologies are there today but unfortunately it's not very easy to access or even find out so i would request uh, as the next step for both uh, naidesha and uh, tech Mindra foundation to start building a compendium of some of these technologies and not just write about what those technologies are but how to get it how much will it cost how to develop a mastery over that technology is there some way in which this technology can be made uh, easily accessible easily adaptable easily affordable what can be done through charity through other kind of government support etc so this is one area where i would like to move one very other important uh, issue for uh, caregivers is that uh, see caregivers in the first instance are obviously parents in those uh, circumstances when parents are not there, maybe some relative or uh, someone else who is part of the immediate family becomes the caregiver. But there is a there is always a question mark on what will happen beyond the caregiver's uh, lifetime. The caregiver eventually at some point will become old, uh, older and will not be able to discharge uh, his or her responsibility. So uh, please uh, study the possibilities on how post the caregiver's immediate kind of uh, assistance also, how a good quality of life, decent uh, living can still be maintained for persons with uh, intellectual living. What are the good suggestions that we have? Of course, we know that National Trust has a program of identifying guardians and uh, guardianship is a important responsibility. Unfortunately, again, not much awareness is there about uh, nominating someone as a guardian. But while that is there, my personal sense is that we can do much more. Can we create a community in which, uh, so as we know, there are lots of communities for very elderly people. There are uh, gated communities where nursing assistance is provided. Physiotherapy is there. Doctor is available on call. Recreation is of, of available. It also comes at some fees. So in our case, in the circumstance that we are talking about, can we create something similar, a community where uh, all possible help is provided. Those who can pay, can pay. Those who can't pay, someone else takes care of uh, their requirements. So let us work on some of these ideas. I'm sure the panelists here will be able to throw more light on what is achievable, what should the government do. And uh, I'm sure that uh, whatever are the good outcomes, unfortunately, I will not be able to listen through the panel, but I would request uh, uh, <clears throat> Shanmukh Priya and others to update me 
subsequently on how the discussions went and if there are some takeaways which are easy to implement where the government the private sector philanthropies technology developers if they can all come together and support i'll be very happy to anchor it so uh, with these words i once again wish that the compendium receives popularity people make use of it my congratulations once again to both tech mahindra foundation and naidisha and uh, all the best uh, for all your future endeavors thank you very much thank you so much jayeshi this was very very heartwarming and the fact that you went into the details and both the points that you raised about assistive technology as well as uh, uh, getting caregivers to a point where they can be reassured about their uh, children i think these are two very very relevant points and have not been addressed enough um, and i can assure you from on behalf of tech mahindra foundation that we are willing to walk the talk on this with you i would love to engage with you in times to come to see how we could create replicable models um, that can then be you know taken across the country so uh, we are now completely committed to work in that direction and i'm glad that the team at tech mahindra foundation decided to put the spotlight on caregivers because in the discourse about persons with disabilities we usually talk a lot about the individuals with disabilities themselves but each time that i visited and especially when it comes to intellectual disability we work with organizations such as sadhna in hyderabad and astha in delhi in each time that i visited this i've seen the humongous role that the caregivers and very correctly mentioned by you the parents of most often the mothers in fact most often the role that they play in making sure that um, you know their children get the kind of therapy which is required to get them to at least a, a basic semblance of uh, dignified and independent living so there is a uh, lots more to be done in this space and uh, i think by uh taking a, a few collaborative steps forward and creating strong replicable models i think we can make a significant uh, um, dent in this entire uh, space so thank you so much jayesh ji for being with us um and uh, i will call upon you the next time i am in hyderabad to take this uh, discussion for, uh, forward thank you so much for being a supporter of tech mahindra foundation um uh, and let's uh, back to naima to take this uh, uh, discussion forward Yeah, thank you, Jay Sanjay sir, for joining us despite of your busy schedule. Attending from car shows really your commitment for the cars. I also we also completely agree with you. Technology can be of a great help for caregivers of Telangana state. As Jaitan said, we'll explore more on this direction of creating compendium of technologies available. Of course, your passion to impact society is commendable. Initiatives created by you in Telangana like TSIG, TSIC, T Hub, creating wonders. always support you to the work carried out at tech mahindra foundation may it be part of our alumni meets at smart centers our support extended while recommending tmf application for national csr awards thank you once again sir for joining us we are really honored by your presence and look forward for your support in our future endeavors too or to thank you very much thank you sir uh, good morning sir sir am i audible sir सर या मैं आडिबल सर हेलो यस हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर यस यू आर ऑडिबल अंजी यस यस मैडम यस मैडम आई एम फ्रॉम निपिड मैडम एंड आई एम फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एडल्ट इंडिपेंडेंट लिविंग वेयर वी आर रनिंग दिस स्किल डेवलपमेंट ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड देन because um, for the benefit of the persons with intellectual disabilities uh, we are creating a, a technologically uh, friendly uh, the working environment madam so that where we can uh, make them to be in the competitive working environment and then total uh, restructured working environment a user friendly environment actually so we have a number of uh, uh, adaptive devices are there as our uh, are uh, expected uh, jayesh and sir explained about the exhibitions where we where they can showcase their abilities in the presence of the uh, uh, the prospect to employers and then uh, um, see uh, uh, to the general public also but we to have the when uh, the resource uh, workshop is there sir where we have the set of uh, this assistive devices and then uh, the uh, with the support of the uh, rehabilitative technology we are uh, making you making the uh, the working situation very simple as per the needs of the individual so even uh, offset printing press we have so where we introduce all the, the oh, excuse me sir and, uh, 
sir, yeah, so we would like to better. proceed with Sadi Samaj. I will have to put you on mute and we'll come back to you and we'll have a longer discussion. Yes. Thank you so much. Anjali and Naima, over to you. Anji, you're on mute. Anji. Anji, you're on mute. Sorry. So engaging, enriching, and truly empowering words from a great leader. So our sincere gratitude to Mr. J. S. Ranjan for your insights. Now I would like to call upon Ms. Prachi Dio, founder and executive director of Naidisha. Under her leadership, Naidisha has won several awards, including the prestigious Zero Project Award at the United Nations office in Vienna. She is also a Salzburg Global Fellow 2020 and was recipient of India Inclusion Fellowship in 2018. She will be moderating today's event uh, and pa panel discussion on empowering caregivers of persons with disabilities and their crucial role in ensuring that PWDs live a life of dignity and independence. I welcome Ms. Dio to the panel discussion Over to Prachi, uh, please. Thank you, Anji. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, once again, welcome to all the everyone who has joined today's event. I want to thank Mr. Jayesh Ranjan for his words. Really, he had in-depth information about our cause, about what we do for families and persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, few points that he shared yes of course we need assistive technology to help people with disabilities but we can also use technology to empower caregivers and give them support in the way uh, they need it so that they can be the they can bring out a change in their children um, with technology with the work we have done so far we have seen that we are able to reach families across the country and we receive helpline calls from the smallest of villages in uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh so definitely technology can be a great enabler to support families. Uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Tech Mahindra Foundation. Thank you, Chetan. Thank you, Neha, for the opportunity and this partnership. I'm so glad that we are able to inaugurate, uh, launch the compendium today. And definitely we have a lot of work to do in terms of distributing the compendium to families who need it, uh, to organizations who need it. Um, I'm also very excited about the panel discussion today because the topic is core to what we do at Naidisha and the topic is close to my heart as being a caregiver. Can we have the next slide, please? So I saw this quote a couple of days back. In fact, it was posted by one of our, one of the organizations we look, uh, look, look up towards. Um, called uh, uh, Noora Health, which also works with caregivers. So this is a quote by Rosalind Carter, and it says that there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, and those who will be caregivers, and of course, those who will need a caregiver. In a way, I think it summarizes our role in the society, in the families that we are. Um, for me, apart from being a founder and executive director to Naidisha, I'm also a sibling to my 50-year-old brother with Down syndrome. Uh, my role has evolved from being a playmate to a companion to a partial caregiver and now a legal guardian and full-time caregiver to my brother. Uh, as I have done this, I'm now a caregiver, not just to my brother, but also my parents. So caregiver to three people. And I know it is not easy. Uh, and it's not just me. Data suggests that we have 62% people who have, disabil who have disabilities and need a caregiver. If we are to extrapolate this further for Indian population, which again, as Chetan said, is 15% of the population has some or the other kind of disability. It means that we have 132 million people who are caregivers at this point. Going back to the percentage, it means that 9.3% of our population is caregivers, 2% with disabilities. I cannot further stress the importance of the discussion we need to have when it is 132 million people who are caregivers. 
without further ado let me introduce you to the panel for today's discussion can we have the next slide we have with us mr anil patel who comes with 25 years of experience in international development he is the founder and executive director of carers worldwide as a development practitioner as a grant maker as a trustee his work is directed towards transforming lives of unpaid carers in families across india nepal and bangladesh he is an international ashoka fellow since 2015 he serves as the chair of the membership and engagement community uh, committee which is iaco which is international alliance of caregiver organizations welcome mr anil we then have krishna krishna is a young parent from raipur uh, krishna's son is 4 and a half years old his name is vikas he loves to play ball Krishna used to work at Haldiram Foods but she had to leave her job after she became a caregiver she has been associated with nai disha since the year and she attends all the events at nai disha all the trainings at nai disha that can enable her to support her son better not just nai disha all the trainings that she can probably access krishna loves to sing she has many other hobbies and i sincerely hope that at some point you are able to pursue your hobbies krishna a uh, warm welcome to mr madhusudan reddy who is a seasoned social worker with 35 plus years of experience he is the founder of sadhna a non profit based in hyderabad which serves more than 225 people young adults and children with developmental disabilities they have a center in hyderabad and also centers surrounding the rural locations of hyderabad um his impactful contribution extends to being a member of u ward and serving as a district level community uh, committee for the disabled he has been recognized with state government's best service award in 2017 the ata lifetime award in 2005 and he has dedicated his life towards transforming uh, providing rehabilitation and support uh, support services welcome again mr madhusudan last but not the least a warm wel welcome to mr shrinivasulu he is the head of he is assistant professor and hod for department of adult independent living at nipid nipid which is the national institute of empowerment of people with intellectual disabilities was established in 1984 uh, in sikandara hyderabad and it is of course uh, under the ministry of social justice and empowerment they also have offices in noida kolkata and mumbai warm welcome mr shrinivasan uh with due respect to all the panelists i'll start the discussion and i'll start it and no uh, to one of my fav my favorite panelist here which is miss krishna who is a parent krishna ji thank you mujhe pata hai aaj aapko pick up karna hai ek aur event mein aapke bete ko vikas ko le jana hai phir bhi aapne time nikala hai aur aaj aap is event mein aayi hai मैं खुद केयर गिवर हूँ आई एक्सपीरियंस चैलेंजेस एज अ केयर गिवर बट आई एम नॉट अ पेरेंट यू आर अ यंग पेरेंट हु रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड हर जर्नी योर सन इज फोर एंड हाफ इयर्स ओल्ड वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर योर जर्नी विद अस एंड वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर द चैलेंजेस यू हैव सीन इन द लास्ट टू एंड हाफ इयर्स सभी को मेरा नमस्कार थैंक यू सो मच मैम मैं बहुत खुश हूँ आज ये मतलब मीटिंग अटेंड कर और Uh, मेरी जर्नी बहुत ही uh, मतलब uh, क्या कहेंगे इसको कि बहुत चैलेंजेस रहे हैं क्योंकि मैं जब मुझे पता चला कि मेरे uh, बेटे को ए है ऑटिज्म है तो मैं गांव में रहती थी और वहां पर कोई थेरेपी uh, मतलब सेंटर नहीं थी तो मुझे वहां स्कूल एडमिशन कराने में दिक्कत हुई क्योंकि वो उसकी सेफ्टी नहीं थी सिक्योरिटी नहीं थी उसको कोई ध्यान नहीं देता था मैं उसके साथ स्कूल भी बैठी पर वो सब बहुत लॉन्ग टर्म तक मैं नहीं कर सकती थी क्योंकि घर भी संभालना था मुझे तो फिर मैं वहां से रायपुर आई हूँ वहां वो जगह छोड़ दी मैंने मेरे हस्बैंड वहीं रहते थे और फिर रायपुर में आकर मैंने थेरेपी सेंटर ढूंढे फिर मैंने उसकी स्पीच मतलब चालू क्लासेस चालू करवाई तो टू पॉइंट का था तब से मैं वर्क कर रही हूँ और ये है कि अभी सेंटेंस लेवल पर आ गया है मेरा बेटा और मैं बहुत खुश हूँ कि नई दिशा ने मेरी हेल्प की है उस टाइम जब मैं सेंटर ढूंढ रही थी मेरे पास 
कोई सपोर्ट सिस्टम नहीं था मैं रायपुर में अकेली आई थी और आ, मुझे मतलब जरूरत थी कि कोई मेरा साथ दे तो मैं मेरे बहुत मतलब कठिनाइयों से गुजरी हूँ फैमिली सपोर्ट नहीं था और अभी अकेले ही उसको संभालती हूँ मैं मेरे को मैं घर पर बात भी नहीं कर पाती साल भर से घर भी नहीं गई हूँ मैं बहुत ही मुश्किल रही है मेरे एक साल से मुझे उसको संभालने में बहुत दिक्कत आती है स्कूल में चैलेंजेस हैं और अभी थेरेपी में भी मतलब दिक्कत होती है कि कहीं पर मतलब सेशन होते हैं कहीं नहीं होते हैं बहुत सारी अभी भी चैलेंजेस हैं मुझे कि एक्सेप्ट नहीं करते हैं लोग कि वो अलग बच्चा है स्पेशल बच्चा है सोशल सोशलाइज नहीं है और सोसाइटी में भी हम लोग एकदम मतलब अड़ोस पड़ोस में बातचीत नहीं कर सकते हैं क्योंकि वो अलग ही है एक तो बहुत मुश्किल रहा है थैंक यू कृष्णा जी थैंक यू आपने जो शेयर किया एक तो आपका लॉर्ड ऑफ कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू यू आपका बहुत बहुत कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन और आपको बधाई क्योंकि आपने कितनी मेहनत की है लास्ट दो साल में विकास हम बात करते हैं उसी से आपके चेहरे पे चमक आई है तो वो सब आपकी मेहनत का नतीजा है आपने बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट चीजों पे टच किया कृष्णा जी यू स्पोक अबाउट द स्टिग्मा दैट इज देर द सोसाइटी लोग जब आते हैं आपने कहा था मुझसे कि कभी बाहर लेके जाती हूँ लोग बहुत भी हर तरीके से देखते हैं यू स्पोक अबाउट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन दैट है स्कूल मेनी टाइम्स यू स्पोक अबाउट द आइसोलेशन दैट अ पर्सन फेस द केयर की वो फेसेस क्योंकि ऐसा नहीं होता कि हम आराम से एक शादी में जा रहे हैं हम आराम से कहीं जा रहे हैं फ्रेंड्स से नहीं मिल पाते घर वालों से नहीं मिल पाते और कभी कभी घर वालों से भी इन चीजों की बात नहीं होती जब फैमिली सपोर्ट नहीं होता तो ये बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट चीजें हैं और वी वर्क विथ सो मेनी फैमिलीज एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली द स्टोरी इज द सेम इन मोस्ट केसेज द स्टोरी इज द सेम द मदर अलोन इज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द चाइल्ड समटाइम्स देर इज फैमिली सपोर्ट बट मोस्ट ऑफ एंड नॉट फैमिली सपोर्ट डजेंट एग्जिस्ट it is a journey of isolation it is a journey where uh, we face stigma at every step but beyond that what amazes me is the strength of family the strength of mothers like you krishna jo har har koshish karte hain ki hamara bachcha uske best true potential par reach kar sake main janti hu aap kitni shiddat se har training attend karte hain har event attend karte hain थैंक यू सो मच फॉर शेयरिंग अबाउट इट और इस जर्नी में हमें अलग अलग लोगों की मदद की जरूरत होती है एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट मुद्दा है जिसकी आपने बात नहीं की बट जयेश रंजन जी ने भी बात की और मुझे पता है कि वो आपके दिमाग में भी होगा हमेशा विच इज वॉट आफ्टर अस विच इज अ वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर एनी एनी पेरेंट एनी फैमिली मेंबर एंड मेनी पेरेंट्स है क्वेश्चन हमारी तरफ से एक नई दिशा वी डू एवरीथिंग वी कैन टू सपोर्ट पेरेंट्स ऑन दिस वी हैव अ डायरेक्टरी ऑफ असिस्टेड लिविंग वी कंडक्ट वर्कशॉप्स वी टॉक टू पेरेंट्स अबाउट व्हाट हाउ टू दे प्रिपेयर फॉर इमरजेंसीज टू दे हैव अ विल डू हैव दे अपॉइंटेड अ लीगल गार्डियन बट ऑनेस्टली देयर आर नो इजी आंसर्स इट इज अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन एंड एवरी एवरी फैमिली फेसेस इट एट सम पॉइंट इन सिचुएशंस लाइक दिस देयर आर ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस लाइक साधना initiatives like individuals like madhusudan ji who provide this support madhusudan ji with sadhana they provide residential living uh, in fact mai madhusudan ji se baat kar rahi thi kuch dino pehle and he said we spoke about this 8 years back when we started nay disha sadhana was one of the initial organizations we had registered in the directory uh, so madhusudan ji i will move to you with the next question अगर आप ये बता पाए कि हाउ डू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक साधना प्रोवाइड सपोर्ट टू फैमिलीज एंड वॉट इज आई नो अलॉट ऑफ ऑडियंस हियर इज पार्टनर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ टेक महिंद्रा फाउंडेशन एंड दे वुड बी वर्किंग विद पीपल विद डिसबिलिटी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू यू वॉट इज द काइंड ऑफ सपोर्ट दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रोवाइड बिकॉज योर प्राइमरी फोकस इज चिल्ड्रेन इज इंडिविजुअल विद डिसबिलिटीज बट देन हाउ डू यू रिकोगनाइज फैमिलीज वॉट इज द सपोर्ट यू प्रोवाइड टू दैम गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू uh thanks for interest me prachi and uh, <clears throat> and most of all i congratulate 
टेक महिंद्रा एंड नई दिशा पर रिलीजिंग द कंपेंडियम गाइड फॉर द इन फॉर द डिजेबल्ड पीपल इन द तेलंगाना स्टेट फर्स्ट विच इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर द केयर गिवर्स एंड द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच आर प्रोवाइडिंग द सर्विसेस फॉर द डिजेबिलिटी पॉपुलेशन ऑफ अवर स्टेट ऑफ तेलंगाना बिकॉज i since last uh, many years i am in the field i am also a secretary general for the federation of organizations working for the disability in state of telangana we have nearly 100 organization working in the federation for the working for dis- different categories of the disabled mostly we are working for the intellectual disability more than 60% of the organization working for the intellectual disabilities in state of telangana and uh, most of the organization we are uh we use the holistic support of approach to provide the support for the serving the families including the educational facilities vocational training and other health care community involvement for these families and we also involve the family centered approach for all the people we also involving the families uh, in planning and uh, decision making of the uh, plans and we also train the educational training for the families once they come to us we need to assess the child and educate the family about their own child that is the most important thing in initial stage and uh, this is a very important stage when they come to us most of the parents initially they come to us my child is having lacking only in one area but uh, when we assess the child may have the lacking in different areas and observing that and uh, assessing that we can we try to explain the families and caregivers and the other people about the child's present level of functioning by using our technology which was given by the nipped functional assessment and other uh, things and after that we try to create the awareness about the this disability into the uh, field to the other people also and uh, not only this and networking is a more important for the this is more important for networking and the peer group involvement is also more important to develop the intellectually challenged children of our society because uh, the parents also sometimes think this because of this child this child is not able to no that is not the thing we also make the parents to involvement of the peer group of the society and your own family members and collaboration of the professionals also more important because the special educators play very important role and the families health workers and other members of the family is more important to bring up the child to dependence to the independent level not only this when you come out talking about the care givers because we are also care giver for the last 3 decades and respite care is a more important nowadays because nowadays both the families are working and the parents have to go for work they have to leave the child for a few hours somewhere here here the day care centers and the residential care center partial respite care homes also available in the city and uh, the parents also can utilize the services and uh, this also can be added in our compendium about the services which are providing in our telangana state and again we do conduct as an organizations we do conduct a community integration programs uh, for the this institutions by uh, meeting together and about how best we can involve the communities in, by involving the nowadays schools more very crucial role to play how best is as a school if you go to invite a school and if you go to school hundreds and thousands of children will know about this disability and where we can improve the life of this child and respect how to respect this intellectual disability of uh, our, our society with this thank you thank you madhu sir thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you sir. yeah aapne bahut important cheezon ki baat ki uh, the topics that you touched one is about acceptance many times acceptance is not easy and we have seen in our work with nay disha when we are counselors speak to parents bahut zaruri hota hai ki family mein wo acceptance aaye and when we also focus on the strengths of the child 
because the conversation typically is the child is lacking this the child is lacking that 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 child is not able to do this but do we focus on what the child is able to do how the child is able to do like krishna mentioned her son likes to play with ball he likes conversing in english he likes reading books so if we are able to identify the child's strength and work with the child's strength we are able to build on it so thank you so much for sharing that peer group is definitely something that that is very important for families because it's a long journey and that nothing works as beautifully as having a peer group speaking to other parents or who are on the same journey you spoke about parent training programs which is something which is very important for families because then they are able to work with their child at home end of the day the child goes to the school for a limited number of hours goes to therapy centers for a few hours but ghar mein jo hota hai what the family does with the child is the something that brings about the real change so thank you so much for sharing your thoughts mother sudanji on this uh with this i will invite mr uh, srinivasulu to share uh, i understand that ni epid also follows family centric care so if you can throw some light on what does family centric care mean to organization as nipd and how does it further percolate into your partner organizations like crcs and what are the initiatives that are available for caregiver support hello uh, good morning ma'am am i audible ma'am my voice is clear yes yes you are thank you ma'am so myself i am srinivasulu i am from nipid nipid national institute for empowerment of persons with intellectual disabilities ours is the headquarter which is in secunderabad we are working under dpw department of empowerment of persons with disabilities ministry of social justice and empowerment government of india ma'am we have uh, three regional centers and three crcs ma'am one is at uh, the rcs regional centers in noida kolkata and mumbai and the yeah. three crcs composite regional centers in uh, nellore andhra pradesh Damanagiri in Karnataka and Rajanandi Gaon in Chhattisgarh. So we have different departments working for intellectual disabilities, right from the infancy level to the old age group. So this is a life cycle approach of the intellectual disabilities. So we have a different uh, interdisciplinary approaches and multidisciplinary approaches working for uh, the assessments, diagnosis, intervention, training, and employment. All levels of services we are providing from the headquarter and RCs and CRCs. Who were approached into the NIPID and its uh, associated centers? Uh, we used to conduct the assessments with respect to the degree of the disability. We are providing the IQ assessments and a different kind of behavior intervention uh, services to the needy population. We have uh, services like uh, respite care services and the autism intervention centers. What were the associated conditions and comorbidities for uh, along with intellectual disabilities? We are providing the need based services from our centers so from my side i am the coordinator and head of the department for adult independent living so we used to work for the above 18 years age group students we have a different kind of vocational training programs from regular vocational training and skill development training program from the national action plan we have different workstations like uh, uh, computer training agro based training manufacturing setups book binding uh, and uh, office assistant kind of training and other activities so these are all approved and some we are able to get the approval from skill council for person with disabilities so this is the vocational training programs however we have other services like uh, special education services and psychological services from the rehab psychology department and apart from this uh, we have services to the extension and outreach programs for the grassroots level workers through the outreach areas suppose if anybody are not availing any kind of services from the center base so we used to conduct the screening and identification programs then uh, distribution of aids and appliances uh, from the adid scheme and we are also providing services to the client registrations for udid for getting the unique disability id card and the niramaya health insurance uh, from the national trust scheme we are the nodal agency for providing this health insurance cards and we are also extending support to the Uh, younger age groups uh, above 18 years age group students for uh, sustaining any kind of livelihood support for the self employment avenues so we from our department side we used to assist the loans for uh, any kind of uh, loans whether it is a small scale kind of thing or high amount of uh, loans so we used to support from the department side these are the basic kind of uh, supports for extension and outreach programs and 
other ministry flagship programs. For example, suppose if anybody in need some kind of project proposals, definitely most welcome from our department and lipid side. So we will support for the project proposal for establishing cross disability early intervention centers and uh, for any kind of DDRS provisions of the parent organizations and special education centers. Then uh, for vocational expansions, suppose if anybody wants the SIPDA support, Scheme for Implementation of Person with Disability Act, it is a national action plan support for vocational and skilling of the PWDs. So we will support for registration of the organizations for training center and training partners. So these are the basic support services for the all types of organizations and parent organizations and different uh, uh, stakeholders from the clientele side, parent side and organization level. Thank you. Suppose if any, any kind of a future in, uh, from the collaborative kind of support, so uh, we are ready to support for the research and development and the documentation and dissemination part also. We are ready to provide some kind of e-learning materials as part of information and technology and a research-based kind of uh, support also we will extend from the NIPIT side. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing this information. It in a way summarizes the services that NIPV provides for uh, persons with intellectual disability. I want to go back to the question and ask you if there are any government schemes as somebody who is representing the government office at this point. Are there any government schemes? Are there any government orders which are in favor of families, in support of families as caregivers that you can share? <clears throat> Ma'am, uh, one thing, from the National Trust, uh, we have a different kind of provisions. There are six to eight schemes. Two schemes are merged. Uh, the first one is that this is the one provision for the early intervention age group students. So it includes all uh, the early intervention services from the infancy level. Suppose if any any, any uh, parent required some kind of medical services, they can avail the benefit of DISHA. This is the early intervention support, especially for any kind of medical services, STPT, what is speech therapy, physiotherapy, occupational therapy kind of things, they can avail the benefit of DISHA early intervention support. And some of these are respite care services for the families, whoever is a remote area kind of people, where there is, uh, whether the service is available or any kind of professional support is not available. So they can avail the benefit of the respite care services. We have our uh, NIPID center is having respite care facilities. So they can come and they can do the registration and they can avail the benefit of this respite care services for shorter duration, preferably two days to five days. So they can stay at our NIPID uh, family cottage then whatever be the medical support or therapeutic services or behavioral kind of things, psycho assessment or vocational training kind of things. So they can uh, reach to the NIPID for uh, respite care facilities for the families of uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities. Not only ID and uh, the associated condition of autism, ADHD, whatever be the Down syndrome and other CP kind of students, they can avail this benefit. Thank you. So you touched upon three important things that the services that are available for caregivers. One of them, of course, is the respite care service that is available at NIPID, where in case of emergency, probably families can leave their loved one there and attend to the emergency, whatever it is. And also about uh, being uh, being able to provide Niramaya health insurance, uh, which again is something important, which in a way reduces the financial burden. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, one, one important ma'am, one important thing ma'am. Yeah. Suppose, uh, because first of all, the most important document is the UDID because maximum amount of uh, PWIDs, of the parents are not aware of this kind of uh, scheme and provision. If uh, if anybody right. is having a UDID kind of things, the free of cost uh, services, then the medicines, then the continuous rehabilitation services with respect to their condition, so they can avail with the UDID. So I am requesting to all the stakeholders, organizations, parents of PWIDs, please go for this registration of UDID. If anybody having Absolutely. difficulty, please approach to us. We are continuously supporting with all departments. We have a course registration centers in NIPID, general service, special education center, ACC, Dial Department of Adult Independent Living, and CDIC, Cross Disability Early Intervention Center. So we have four registration centers in NIPID. So they can avail the benefit of a UDID card so that they can avail any kind of in future uh, services from uh, an NIS level or whatever be the government said, they can avail with this benefit. It's a free of cost, including medicines and all the OPD and other benefit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as you said, getting the certificate probably is the first step towards availing any kind of benefit and 
we conduct various camp various training programs for parents to know about these services our parents to know about how to get the certificate and go ahead and get these services of course so that was a very important point mr shrinivas yes so the discussion so far has been how can families be the change agents how can they support their children how can they support their loved ones with disability when i first started nay disha of course that is something that we were looking at can can families be the change agents in the lives of their children but it took me covid it took me caregiver burnout to realize that caregivers are individuals an important group of stakeholders in their own right and the discourse shouldn't just be about they being the change agents for their loved ones they are individuals their health their well being is equally important uh, just not just for the well being of their loved ones but also for they themselves uh, this is the area where mr anil patel with carers worldwide is doing tremendous work and uh, anil can you please share about the uh, various aspects that need to be looked into for caregiver recognizing caregivers as individuals and taking the discourse to caregiver well being good afternoon and uh, greetings from carers worldwide first of all thank you so much uh, prachi and uh, neha for inviting me to be part of this uh, rich panel discussion and uh, congratulations on launching compendium which is much needed resource for all the service providers as well as uh, parents and caregivers in the country i hope it will be translated into different languages uh, very soon and that will be made available to various uh, organization across the country i also like to say you know, few seconds about the uh, ekmantra uh, foundation and when i listened to chetan kapoor i was really really delighted to hear that 10% of their investment has been enshrined in part of their uh, foundations uh, charter that is amazing i haven't come across any organization made that kind of commitment uh, congratulations to all of you i would like to request tech mandra foundation and other csr not just to ring fence for people with disability but also their caregivers it is so important and uh, vital their role is uh prachi you you beginning of your speech you talked about uh, rosalind carter uh, quote you quoted her there are four kinds of caregivers so that means all of us on this virtual platform and all of us on this this planet one or the other day we all will become either caregivers or somebody will be caring us during our lifetime it doesn't discriminate whether you are rich or poor it doesn't discriminate whether you are singer or scientist it doesn't discriminate whether you are actor or astronaut it affects each one of us can we put the spotlight as chetan and also uh, rajesh ranjan has highlighted put a spotlight on caregivers it is time for us to look into from caregivers point of view as well carers worldwide um, has been uh, providing the support to unpaid family carers over last 10 years like prachi and uh, krishna i am also a caregiver i have a beautiful daughter uh, her name is maya and she has down syndrome privilege to have her she is enriching our life because of her and that experience of being a caregiver has inspired me to set up this carers worldwide uh, and it has been growing for last 10 years in three countries we are working in india nepal and bangladesh very soon will be planning to expand so uh, again you highlighted uh, prachi statistics so about that there are going to be 132 million caregivers that means three and a half times the size of uh, telangana population i would say but nobody is putting a spotlight on that we have the statistics about people with disabilities or people with mental health issues or alzheimers dementia elderly but no one is talking about that there was a report done by who world health organization 2030 there is going to be 400% increase in the need for caregivers 
what I'm trying to highlight here is literally we are sitting on a bubble. We don't know when that bubble is going to burst. So like Krishna and Prachi and Madhusudan and everybody and Rajesh uh, Ranjan also, Jayesh Ranjan also talked about what happens, something happens to me, who after me, who is going to look after. So that question worries everybody, all the carers, uh, literally. So there are ways we can think about how we can address that. So what is it we do for carers? Uh, let me share a few thoughts on that. I won't take much time. Um, so for the first time, we recognize that uh, carers play a critical role in terms of care for individuals here, persons with disabilities. So their role needs to be recognized, first of all. And majority of carers are women. 84% of carers are women. So that needs to be defeminized. Why, why can't men, more men can involve so that the primary caregivers or women can have life on their own as well. Sometimes they can go out with friends or attend social events and all. And second is this uh, role, critical role they are playing, it is invisible. It is hidden behind the curtain. And we need to make that visible and give that respect to them. And the third one is most important aspect is resources need to be, uh, provisions need to be made to not just to support with persons with disabilities, but also to the carers. So for that, I have developed a model called Carers Worldwide Model, which has a five elements. And uh, through that, we are empowering family carers. The one first thing what we are able to do is bringing carers together created an emotional support group for carers, making them feel that they are not alone and giving them a hope and connecting with other carers in similar situations. And today we have more than 1,200 such groups have been promoted in India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. Um, so it is amazing just to see that 60 to 90 minutes, whatever time they have, and 91% participation is their carers. They feel that it is my time. And they are talking about their issues, challenges, difficulties, what they are going through. And uh, uh, giving them a purpose in life. And the second is, it was really shocking when we done the survey of uh, carers about their health and well-being. More than 85% of carers are showing the signs of anxiety and depression. One side, we are treating the people who have been diagnosed with the mental health issues. Other side, carers, there is no support system. Imagine if you don't provide that support to the caregivers, they will become the users of the mental health services. And 78% uh, of carers were having physical health issues and 28% of them were having family issues and relationship issues. So we organized the specific health camps and depending on their need, working closely with the local authorities to improve their health and well-being. I'm also delighted to share more than 600 carers have been trained as barefoot counselors. They are the first point of contact in the villages, connecting with other carers in similar situations. And each barefoot counselor is responsible for 20 to 25. Like Jayas Ranjan was talking about use of technology. We use the technology to connect the carers. And it is re resulting in amazing uh, impact among the caregivers. And third one, uh, everybody talked about is uh, how important is the respite care and the short break. Since they became a carer, they never had an opportunity to take time off. For example, if I don't charge my mobile for next 24 hours, this will be dead. Battery will be dead. But carers are continuously providing that care without any break. Like you and me and all on this virtual platform, we all uh, take time off during the weekend or festivals and and on. But for carers, absolutely there is no opportunity for them to take time off and their battery is continuously draining. For that, we have promoted an innovative community caring centers. More than 60 centers are running where two adult carers are caring for their loved one so that primary caregivers got some time off, like five to six hours. During the day, they can attend social events or go to part-time work or at, you know, go to market to buy the vegetables and all, and children are receiving much needed enrichment support within the centers. These are some innovative ideas we are practicing. 
And the fourth one, what is it we do, uh, is uh, uh, employment, education, and training for carers. You know, carers, they have the skills, they, had, they were employed, but because of caring responsibility, they have to give up their job. And whatever the financial resources they had, it's draining faster than one could imagine. So along with caring responsibility, whether there are opportunity for them to uh, earn an income, home-based uh, income. When we started the work, only 30% of carers had a regular income. Today, I'm delighted to share more than 84% of carers are earning an income between 350 to 500 rupees per day. These are home-based activities, various, and part of that we have promoted four carers cooperatives. Uh, this is first of all, it's kind in South Asia, exclusively for carers uh, to cooperatives, for the financial sustainability, for supporting the health issues. Uh, carers are able to borrow money and they repay back. And this is how today that corpus fund is four crore is there. And they started saving as well. One of the issues is if I'm not no more, whether my sibling or my relatives or my guardian, somebody can take care. So they started saving the money in the name of the child, in the name of the person they are caring for. So that money is so one and a half crore is there now, that savings uh, the money. And finally, you know, uh, it is important to have the platform for the carers. We have the platform for everybody, like uh, Madhusudan ji was talking about, platform for people with disabilities or children platform, women's platforms are there. And uh, carers are talking, they're very proud, very proud, and they are very happy to care for their loved one. But they are talking about, uh, everybody comes and talks about rights of people with disability, rights of uh, people with mental illness, rights of women, rights of children. What about my right? Am I not human being? who is talking about my issues, my challenges, and my difficulties. So what we've done is at village and panchayat level, we have these groups. At block level, we have federation and district level associations. These are the registered organizations. Today, we have 18 organizations we have promoted along with our partner organization in India and Nepal and Bangladesh. And the state level, we have state level forums. And uh, at the national level, we have promoted Carers Alliance so that there are three tier structure has been promoted to have the platform for carers to advocate for their services, advocate for the recognition of their issues and challenges and difficulties, advocate for the needs, uh, meeting their needs. And uh, I'm also delighted to share, uh, I don't know Prachi whether shall I stop here, just I will take another 30 seconds or one minute to then complete, then I will leave it to you. <laughs> for further questions. Delighted to share, in a, such a short period of time, we we're instrumental in bringing two significant policy change in India. One, Rights of Persons with Disability Act. Uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with that. So we're instrumental in bringing that support to caregivers, those three golden words in that. And similarly, Mental Health Act in 2017, again, highlighting the support to high dependency care. So we are using that to develop the guidelines and the program to support caregivers. I'm very proud and delighted to share. We are an advisor to the government of Karnataka and also Tamil Nadu government. And we have made a recommendation to government. And Karnataka government is providing caregivers allowance since last year. This is the first time happening in the country. And we have taken this uh, story to Tamil Nadu government and they started providing the caregivers allowance, like similar to disability pension, caregivers pension. Not all caregivers, but high dependency care, those who have the certificate of 75% and above. But at least that is a beginning. So now the government is recognizing. And the second one is impact of our emotional support group for carers, what we have promoted and how it has been reducing the loneliness and isolation and, and reducing their vulnerability. Now the government of Karnataka, beginning of this year, in the month of February, they issued an order to promote 7,000 carers group across the state in 31 districts. And we have been commissioned to provide the training for their re village rehabilitation workers, multiple re rehabilitation workers. So these are some of the things in a, such a short period of time 
we are not only improving the health and well-being of family carers so that the quality of care is better, but also using that evidence, how we are engaging the policymakers to bring the systemic change in the countries uh, where we are working. So thank you so much, uh, Prachi. Um, I can go on and share, but let me stop here. Uh, I'm sure uh, other panels members have other points to make. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anil. I, my next question was going to be about financial burden and talking about what else can be done. So you touched upon a very important point. In a way, what caregivers do, as family caregivers do, like Krishna ji mentioned, Krishna ji, aap apne bachche ko padha rahi hai ghar mein. Uh, many of the caregivers provide that support, uh, medical support at home. So we are actually reducing the burden on the education systems and on the medical care systems and contributing to it. So this contribution has to be recognized. By doing this, many of the caregivers have to give up on their jobs, give up on the work that they are doing. That's one part of it. The other part of the story is that there is increasing financial burden day after day with the needs that the person with disability might have, which is where import, that is, it is very important to provide that financial support. As you mentioned, having pension for caregivers, we have pension for people with disabilities, but also having pension for caregivers because they are providing the care, recognizing their contribution to the healthcare and education system of the country. Recognizing how they are taking up the load is very important and I'm so glad that you were able to, you are successful. Of course I would say that the pensions need to increase but we have to start somewhere and we have to work towards it and that has happened in Karnataka, it has happened in Tamil Nadu I hope it can happen in Telangana. Chetan when we meet Jay Shanjan probably next time that is something that we should definitely speak about, about pension for caregivers and advocate for that um I will come back to the, I really love the term about defeminizing caregiving. Before I come there, I'm going to go back to Krishna ji because I know that you have to pick up your son. So, uh, Krishna ji, you listened to all these things, you listened to this discourse. You listened to this discourse. What is it important hai in terms of the support? You talked about your challenges. Ki baat ki thi. But now listening to various panelists, talking about what is the kind of support that should be available. Would you highlight what are the three important things for you as a caregiver? Ma'am, I mean, what are the challenges for me? You're asking me that you're asking me. I'm asking you that we've heard that there is a support available in which kind of support is available. So, when we look at our challenges, what are the things that you think are the most important things? Like respite care was talked about. Financial हाँ. support, pension की बात हुई थी, हाँ. having parents as their support system और peer community की बात हुई थी, तो आपके हिसाब से तीन सबसे महत्वपूर्ण support क्या रहेंगे? Ma'am, तीनों you know, ती, मतलब financial support भी होना चाहिए, क्योंकि कहीं कहीं long term तक therapies के इतनी fees है कि uh, middle class family pay नहीं कर पाती है और घर चलाना और साथ साथ school और therapies ये सब balance करने के लिए financial support होना जरूरी है. और जो संस्थाएं मतलब जैसे आप लोग की संस्था काम कर रही है जो इमोशनल सपोर्ट देती है कि हम अकेले नहीं है हमारे साथ आप लोग हैं तो ये भी हमें बहुत बड़ी हिम्मत देता है क्योंकि हमें जरूरत है कि आप हमें नॉलेज देते हैं गाइड करते हैं वो भी बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है क्योंकि आज मैं जानती हूँ कि मेरे साथ कोई नहीं है ना फैमिली सपोर्ट है ना ससुराल माए की कहीं से भी कोई सपोर्ट नहीं है तो मुझे बहुत जरूरत है कि कोई मुझे ज्ञान मतलब नॉलेज दे कि कोई संस्थाएं हैं जो हमारे लिए काम कर सकती हैं और जो इम्पोर्टेंट एक चीज और सर ने बताई थी वो उस बात से भी मैं अग्री थी कि जो उन्होंने फोन का एग्जांपल दिया था कि मोबाइल चार्ज नहीं करेंगे तो मतलब वो डेड हो जाएगा तो ऐसे ही हम पूरा 24 घंटे अपने बच्चे के लिए जो वर्क कर रहे हैं कि वो अच्छा हो जाए और हमें जो समाज में मतलब जो रेपुटेशन है या जो हमें लोग अच्छे से देखें कि कुछ अलग ही नजर से देखते तो वो सब चीजें भी बदलना चाहिए कि आ, मतलब हम भी आ, उस सब चीज से निकलकर अपना बच्चे को अच्छा कर रहे हैं और आ, पेंशन की जो आपने बात की थी उससे भी मैं अग्री हूँ क्योंकि वो भी बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है कि बाद में हमारे बाद उनको कौन देखेगा या 
जैसे हम नहीं रहेंगे तो उनको कौन उनका ख्याल रखेगा या पूरी तरह से उनको सेटल करेगा क्योंकि बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है लाइफ में आगे क्या होना है और बच्चा किस फील्ड में अच्छे से करे जाने मतलब जाएगा तो वो सब भी चीजें बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है और मैं चाहती हूँ कि जो भी संस्थाएं हैं वो मुझे भी पता चल जाएंगी तो मैं उस पर वर्क करूंगी कि मेरा बच्चा मेरे बाद कौन देखेगा तो वो बहुत ही बड़ा एक क्वेश्चन है और सभी को इसकी चिंता होती है क्योंकि अभी तो हम 24 घंटे उन्हें देख रहे हैं सब सिखा रहे हैं पर फिर आगे क्या है मतलब बहुत वैसा चीज है ये बहुत ही चिंता वाली बात है यस मैम हम हमारी तरफ से ये करते हैं कि वी ट्राई एंड सपोर्ट हावर लव्ड वंस की वो जितना इंडिपेंडेंट हो सके वो हो पाए और उसके आगे हम क्या करते हैं उसमें बहुत सारी चीजें आती है लीगल गार्डियनशिप लेना जरूरी है लिख के रखना कुछ फाइनेंशियल अरेंजमेंट करना जो भी जिससे जो बन सके वो जरूरी है जो विल के माध्यम से होती है विल बनाने के लिए ये जरूरी नहीं है कि किसी के पास बहुत सारे पैसे हो बहुत बड़ा ट्रस्ट हो बट जो कुछ है वो बच्चे के लिए वो अरेंज करना किन के साथ रहेगा वो वो डिस्कस करना बहुत जरूरी हो जाता है तो आप एज अ मदर आप फुल टाइम केयर गिविंग प्रोवाइड करती हैं मैं सिबलिंग हूँ मैं केयर गिविंग प्रोवाइड करती हूँ इन अ वे आई हैव बीन प्रिवलेज के माय पार्टनर हैज बीन सपोर्टिंग मी इन द केयर गिविंग ऑफ माय ब्रदर विच इज अनहर्ड ऑफ ऑलवेज सीन माई फादर पार्टिसिपेट इन केयर गिविंग ऑफ माई ब्रदर बट ये ज्यादा होता नहीं है uh, अनिल uh, you shared a very important statistic saying that 84% of caregivers are women and you used the term that we need to defeminize caregiving so uh, maybe i'll go to madhusudan ji and you can share how do we defeminize caregiving hum ye kaise kare kaise bataye ki uh, the father has to play an important role in the caregiving of their child yes true as the krishna sir said Uh, most of the percentage of the caregivers are only the mothers uh, what i have seen and uh, mostly the people who are working in the organizations who are giving the care for the intellectually disabled also uh, women because in my organization also we have a more women caregivers who are providing for the and the boys and girls also as sir said we need to think about the uh, give them a uh, importance of the a father and the responsibility of the taking care of the child also we are nowadays we are training the fathers also and about the how, how important is the father is also more important to train the intellectually disabled child not only the mother's responsibility this is what we are trying to educate the both the parents making them sit together and uh, make them to understand how whatever the time you can devote for your own child to improve in different Uh, skills that's what we are doing with uh, lots of parents and uh, other caregivers also in this uh, 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 aspect madam this is what we are doing we are trying but still it needs to make them to understand by the their own family members sometimes they bring we call them to bring over here one onwards they can also be a part of a supportive caregiver for other own his own kid that's what we are doing madam थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मॉडलिंग किसी ऐसे फादर को लाना जो खुद केयर गिविंग प्रोवाइड करते हैं वो पेरेंट सपोर्ट ग्रुप में फादर सपोर्ट ग्रुप भी करना ताकि एग्जांपल देख सके और हर फादर को हर हर मेल को ये एहसास हो सके कि माय वाइफ इज डूइंग सो मच माय पार्टनर इज डूइंग सो मच आई कैन ऑल्सो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट प्रोबेबली दैट इज वन मोर वे ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट इट At नई दिशा वी हैव अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल पोस्टर विच टॉक्स अबाउट की एक माँ है और माँ के अतिरिक्त हमने बाकी फैमिली मेंबर्स को रखा है जहाँ पे हर कोई रोल प्ले कर सकता है और हमने छोटी छोटी बातें लिखी है जो वो कर सके जैसे की ससुर है ससुर बोल सकते हैं आज तुमने बहुत कर लिया मैं बच्चे को लेके पार्क जाता हूँ आई टेक द चाइल्ड टू द पार्क द मदर इन लॉ सेस में भी आई हेल्प यू विद अगेन दट जेंडर इन अगेन Uh, somebody else says a friend calls her up and says, "I know you like that nail polish. Maybe I'll get it for you." Forget everything. Just the younger sister calling Krishna ji ne bahot zor diya tha us baat pe ki kabi kabi family support nahi hota hai. Or baat hamesha caregiving ki aur tum thak gayi ho kya wo hona zaruri nahi hai. 
बात ये भी हो सकती है कि हाउ आर यू डूइंग पता है आई सॉ दैट मूवी ऑफ योर फेवरेट एक्टर एंड दिस इज हैपनिंग ओवर देयर या ये फिल्मी गॉसिप है या आज यहाँ पे ये माहौल है मैं उस रिश्तेदार के शादी में गई थी वो बातें होना भी जरूरी है और इवन ये बातें करके थोड़ा बहुत तो मन और चीजों पे जाता है थोड़ी बहुत और बातें हो सकती है अगेन वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग सो मच ऑन रिस्पाइट एंड वॉट आर द फेसिलिटीज अवेलेबल एंड आई नो अनिल यू आर अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस रिस्पाइट द ग्रुप and there was a panel on various ways of providing respite one part of it of course is respite that can be provided by community centers uh, shri nivas sulu ji shared about the respite care that is available at nipid what are other ways that caregivers can find that respite <clears throat> hello prachi you are asking question to me or uh, to i am asking question to you sorry with your experience uh, and yeah the support yeah, system yeah. and everything yeah. um there are different ways and different approaches one can uh, uh, have the respite care facilities patchi uh, one in the western world particularly in europe there are uh, day care centers are there and overnight stays are there uh, and also there are policies and apps are there it is uh, uh, carers can uh, rightfully access that respite care uh, for week or 10 days uh, and also there are paid leaves are there so that they can go on holidays uh, that is one more second is there is assisted living is there so that uh, uh, people can live in a uh, trusted and guardian uh, uh, role and uh, primary caregivers and rest of the family can go and uh, have some time together and uh, enjoy their life together and the children put in a assisted living system uh, or adult for example they are uh, receiving much needed support and they have all the information about the health background the health condition what needs to be done and whom to provide the support and all this is all supported by the government Uh, so that again new policies perhaps uh, tech mahindra and the nayi disha could think uh, along with the uh, uh, pension for uh, caregivers and of course there are different uh, models are there like nursing homes in india for example uh, uh, and uh, as well as one i felt this community caring uh, centers which is not requires much needed resources but you can set up within the community uh and provide the training to the carers so this is interesting like we have more than 60 centers two adult carers they are gaining the employment uh, and now of that more than 60 10 are independent parents are contributing to run these centers and that oh. has enabled the carers to go out and earn an income and uh, right. because they are earning 500 to 600 rupees and they are paying 10% of their daily earning to run these centers so and this has become a entrepreneurship business model for the some of the carers uh, as well and the fourth one is uh, where we tried in karnataka you know we have advocated to have at the panchayat level this 5% reserve fund and through that we were able to access and uh, some of the association the carers associations are running these centers they have access to around 5 lakh rupees and we have provided some additional resources but again these models are coming there are various models one can what i'm going to say is whatever is appropriate to the culture and need of the caregivers there is no one size fits for all so there are different ways we need to uh, think about and what works best for in a tribal area may not work in urban area uh, what Very works in uh, uh, rural karnataka may not work in uh, telangana so it has to be uh, culturally appropriate and need of the uh, caregiver if i can take uh, just a slightly different one at uh, uh, 30 seconds uh, perhaps uh, uh, again uh, naid disha and the other panel members uh, and uh, other Uh, partners of tech mahendra foundation as well as tech mahendra foundation one of the things we all can do together is we have been advocating and i'm delighted to share with you that you know we have the narega 100 days work is there 
many of our carers in rural areas, caregivers in rural areas, they have the job card, employment card, but they are unable to participate. They are unable to go out and earn an income. So we have advocated at a local nodal officer and state officers uh, related to Narega, why can't you consider caregiving itself as a job? Why can't you provide that 100 days? I'm saying about high dependency care, some of the things which we talked about, not all caregivers. Those who can participate, that is fine. Those who have the alternative caring arrangement, they can participate. And I'm delighted to share with you, last year alone, more than 9,000 carers have accessed uh, between uh, 20 to 24,000 rupees part of this. So now we shared that uh, story with the Karnataka government and they have sent a single file to central government to bring this uh, guideline changes until unless the change is happened at a central level. Imagine if that guidelines is changed and caregiving is included, there are millions and millions of carers will be able to access that uh, support. Uh, that one policy change will transform the lives of many millions of uh, carers. And similarly, Odisha government has forwarded and the Tamil Nadu government has forwarded. I would request uh, Telangana government, now the new government is there with Mother Sudan, and we all can uh, work towards in India in the six states, and I'm happy to share more about our work later. Thank you. Right. Um, that is very important. As you said, one way to provide financial support for families can happen through pensions, but the other way is using Mandrega because they have their Mandrega card and they're not able to use it, but it they are actually doing the job. They are actually providing care. So they should be compensated for it. That's a very important point. And hopefully with all the audience there, I know Tech Mahindra Foundation, of course, is hosting this. Uh, with Naidisha, we have other partners of uh, Tech Mahindra Foundation who are based in Telangana. And if we can have that collective action where we can advocate for this for the state of Telangana, probably we can yield some results there. Uh, with regards to respite care centers, uh, there are some respite care centers that are available in the country. We have listed them in our Naidisha directory. For example, Sopan in Mumbai has started the respite. Again, we spoke about NIPID having respite. There are, we had been to Patna for a project and what we found is even under the uh, uh, Right to Education Act, the resource persons that work there, there are small um, resource centers within schools. Not every village, every school has these, but multiple do. Or un resource centers may be respite care hota hai, jo avail kiya ja sakta hai. Um, I know we are, we would want to get questions from all the audience. They have been patiently listening to us, so it's best that we take those questions. While we get the questions, probably just one word from each panelist on our collective action, what is one thing that's important for empowering caregivers? Just one word from each of you and I'll make a round. Probably start with uh, Krishna, one word that you want to Caregivers, for caregivers, for caregivers, just one word. In one word, I would like to caregivers are incredible person. Continuously काम कर रहे हैं उसका अर्थ बता देती हूँ कि continuously काम कर रहे हैं वो caregiving कर रहे हैं सब कुछ मतलब कर रहे हैं वो एक बहुत powerful person कहलाएंगे क्योंकि incredible का meaning ही होता है वो कोई uh, normal व्यक्ति नहीं है क्योंकि उनके पास special child है और वो उसको संभाल रहे हैं तो वो एक अद्भुत ही मतलब शक्ति भगवान हमें देता है कि हम उसे संभाल पा रहे हैं तो incredible okay. Madhusudanji, one word for yeah, one call. Yeah, she said, incredible. I added just uh, confidence need to be created in this uh, caregivers. That's the most important thing, madam. Thank you. Sure, sure. And Anilji, your work has been for caregivers. So one word. And then maybe Srinivasuliji, maybe we can have you, Srinivasuliji. I couldn't see you on the panel. Agar aap ek word share karna Ma'am, capacity building. Capacity building is very much essential for the caregivers. So then only they can Absolutely. extend the valuable support to the needy one. Absolutely. In fact, the NEP new National Education Policy Act 
also talks about it. They talk about yes. how can we help family caregivers to provide home-based interventions. So capacity building is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anil, uh, last word from you for caregivers. It might be a little bit cheeky. Can I use the two words, two things? <laughs> One is um, uh, caregivers are the catalyst for therapy success. That word catalyst is so important. You know, we all right. are professionals here. We provide the information and uh, transfer the skills, but it is the carers who, caregivers who are making it happen. Then we see the change. So they act as a catalyst. Please recognize that. And the second one is many of our caregivers, they do not know how to read and write, but they do know how to care for their loved one. What I call is they are expert by experience. Can we recognize that? Can we acknowledge that? Can we appreciate that wonderful role they are playing day in, day out. So thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, we'll open it for further questions. Uh, I'm sure we are getting questions which are directed to Aditi and uh, Praveen. And if you can share those. And also the panelists that they're directed towards. So Mr. Patil, uh, we have a question for you. Uh, would it be possible for you to share a specific case where carers worldwide made a significant impact on the lives of caregivers? And if you can maybe add the key factors that contributed to the success there. Oh, sure. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Neha, for that uh, question. Uh, there are several out there. I can pick up one uh, uh, story. Uh, Caregiver name is Parvati, and uh, they have two beautiful uh, children, and the second child was born with the cerebral palsy. For three years, they were not aware of the child has such condition. And unfortunately, during this uh, three-year period of time, and the husband bought a uh, truck and met with an accident and passed away. And whatever loan he borrowed and the people who were coming and uh, asking for the repayment and to see neglected about the child and the conditions and all. So she reached a point that she attempted to commit to suicide three times. And somehow our carers group came to know, this is the story in Karnataka. Uh, and uh, they all went and shared their story. I know that you have been going through this difficult situation. We all have been going through that difficult situation. We understand your challenges and difficulty. Can you give us 60 minutes and listen to us and we will listen to you. And I don't know what transpired in that 60 minutes. At the end of that 60 minutes, he said, I will make a commitment to this group that I will never ever attempt suicide again. Today, she is the carer champion and she won the state award in Karnataka for best care and the service she received from our partner organization, she became the president of that organization. And single-handedly, she promoted 40 carers groups. And today, uh, she is uh, one of the role models for us, and she is the president of the organization, president of the carers association. And there are thousands of such stories, I can tell you. And that is the impact we were able to have. And she was instrumental in terms of sharing this carers group, how much it meant to her. She used the word care. If carers group wasn't there, I don't know what would have happened to my life. Carers groups, caregivers groups have been a lifeline for me. If I need anything, I could go and talk to uh, members of this caregivers uh, group. That not only reduced her loneliness, that uh, gave her hope, and the confidence still says, says I have still challenges and difficulty, but I found a courage, courage to lead a life. And she has been an inspiration for many, many thousands of carers. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was such a heartwarming story and such a such a good note to end the panel with. I'll thank all of you. Srinivas Ji, uh, Madhusudan Ji, Anil, and Krishna. Thank you so much for joining. Um, joining the panel. I will now hand it over to the MCs to continue with the event oh, further. Sorry, can I just take 10 seconds? Sure. One point I've missed uh, is not about the carers. You know, we, we recently celebrated International uh, 
World Disability Day on 3rd of December or International Disability Day. Right. We didn't have a day for caregivers. You know, we have the day for everybody, Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, Valentine's Day, uh, uh, World Mental Health Day, everything, nothing for caregivers. Last seven, eight years, we have been celebrating Carers Day. I'm very proud and delighted to share that United Nations, we have been working part of that uh, Prachi has made an introduction, International Alliance on Carers Organization. We have been working with uh, uh, United Nations and WHO and delighted and proud to share 29th of October is the day declared for caregivers this year. And okay. so that is the, so please watch this space next year. You celebrate wherever you are, put a spotlight on caregivers. Caregiver, Thank you so much. 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 Before the, before the MCs uh, take over, I personally must thank each one of you, Prachi, Anilji, Krishna, Madhusudanji, and of course, Srinivas. I think this has been one of the most illuminating Saji Samaj that I've listened to. Uh, you know, we this is the 11th one. And I think in just these, uh, uh, you know, last one hour or so that we've been uh, talking, so much that I've learned, understood, and also realized that uh, this is an area where there is so much more to do. You know, I've been working in the social sector for more than 20 years, and I realized that the more you work, the more you realize that there is to work. And this is Thank clearly you. an area where uh, I think we need to really shift the focus or basically put the additional focus because I think, um, you know, uh, Prachi, you were asking about one word that we can use for caregivers. And I agree with Krishna when she said incredible. Of course, there are there are incredible lot of people, but I think how do you empower the incredible? You know, how do you make them uh, even more powerful to uh, do what they are supposed to do? I think is the challenge that we must take on. And a lot of insights that came in this discussion in the form of helping ways to collectivize them, helping them to become emotionally stronger. You know, we at Tech Mandra Foundation have been working on the idea of social, emotional and ethical learning for the last few years. And I can clearly see that um, you know, coming into the picture when it comes to working with caregivers. So there's so many areas and would love to engage. And Anilji, I, I was not aware about this organization, honestly, but, you know, while you were talking, I looked at your website. I think you're doing incredible work um, and it will be great to, um, you know, engage with you. So thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. Back to you, Naima and Anji. Thank Hello. you so much. Thank you so much, Prachi, uh, for moderating this discussion. You brought out some wonderful points and uh, wonderful insights from all the panelists who shared their wisdom and their experiences with us. And um, it definitely throws a different kind of spotlight. And we, we are already starting to look at uh, caregivers in a different way after this discussion uh, and I hope I, that we have been able to do that for all the audience members also who joined us in case you had some questions and you were not able to ask them here or no later, I asked the question ask. but I didn't pick that uh, I, sorry. my name is Satish I am Tekem associate so I am also father of uh, cerebral palsy and epilepsy and I am proud father so I had you know many questions I sent to Praveen that didn't take. Yeah, just so it's a question. Yes. Yeah, and just I wanted to add right one point. You know, we miss that. So we need an acceptance. Okay. So I see that working with a parent with a same uh, special child, they're not accepting. They, you know, the child is special. I, you know, I work for them. I connected with more than two hundred parents. Okay, I'm helping them to EDID stress therapies and my my wife is a special educator so acceptance and awareness is missing so for that uh, i just wanted to know this you know just we can work with together for pune you know those parents are connected to me so counseling the peer counseling with the special needs parents to special needs parents is more important rather than you know doctors so that i wanted to say that Bilkul, bilkul. We have a support group happening in Pune tomorrow. So we'd love for you to join the support group and we can share those details with you. Yeah, anytime. Thank you so much for sharing that. Wonderful. I mean, this is really close to everybody's heart and um, uh, closing the, this discussion as of now. But of course, uh, you can always post uh, questions or through email. Um, 
for i would now want to invite mr praveen kumar who is from our uh, tech mahindra foundation hyderabad team for closing remarks over to you praveen thanks so much so ladies and gentlemen as we conclude the 11th edition of saji Sa Sa samaj i extend my heartfelt thanks to our distinguished speakers panelists and our esteemed keynote speaker mr jay sanjan sir so your insights have eliminated our understanding of the challenges faced by caregivers and the pivot role they play in ensuring the dignity and independence of persons with disabilities my sincere appreciation goes to our panelists mr anil patil founder and executive director of carers world carers world and uh, worldwide man mr p madhusudan reddy founder and secretary of sadhana institute for intellectual challenge and ms krishna choudhary a parent with child with autism and mr sinwaslu hod department of adult independent living at lipid so your diverse perspectives and experiences have enriched our discourse and shed a light on the multiple aspects of care giving a special acknowledgement to our moderator ms prachi dio founder and executive director of nayadisha for skillfully steering the panel discussion and ensuring a meaningful exchange of ideas and a special thanks to nayadisha team priya aditi and samrita for their valuable contribution for the compendium so the tech mahindra digital studio team did a fantastic job uh, on designing the compendium so thank you miss anjali datta and team sukesh vamshi and especially rohit and abhishek for your contribution and coordination also i extend my heartfelt thanks to tech mahindra foundation team mr chetan kapoor sir sudhir babu and miss neha soneji and anji reddy for their continuous support and commitment and a special thanks to our presenters ms naima and ms anji reddy for smooth driving of this event i would also like to thank all the attendees for this active participation insightful questions and unwavering commitment in building an inclusive society your engagement has really added an immense value to the discussions which held today now let us take the forward the spirit of saji samaj and implement the valuable insights gained today into actionable in initiatives together we can contribute for creating a society where caregivers are adequately supported and persons with disabilities lead lives of a dignity and independence thank you and have a wonderful day thank you so much sabhi ko thank you so much